Hoy, anjang kapala, and nandito na naman ako, and I'm on the floor actually, cause we're gonna do some repotting. So tara. So remember last time I did an unboxing six boxes of lettuce upon. So now we're gonna utilize them. I do have some plants here. So I, I did acquire some from Purgis. Uh, I just yeah mostly purges actually this bunch and then at the same time the stuff that I ordered from Amazon are here and I'm I was able to grab bowls from dollar store and also a good Hoya friend of mine stopped by earlier and gave me a goodie bag so I'm gonna be using um, some of the trellises that he made yes he actually made this from scratch I told him he should sell them they're cute it looks like me <laughs> looks like Olaf it's like a snowman and also he gave me this pot three of these pots I already used the other two well I already used one we're gonna use one of these on this Hoyas that I'm gonna be repotting with you I will be showing how I actually prepare them or prepare them from soil removing the soil washing them up and actually planting them in the juice of corn so yeah without further ado we're gonna go through that here's our setup guys so hello i do have a plastic bag there and the hoyas we're gonna grab this one first hoya pachycleta that i got from grow that babies or hoya how so what i do here i just basically remove it and the best time you do this is when the soil is dry that's what i feel like it works best so i just tickle it off basically massage as much as i can off of the roots and i try not to disturb it as much but basically you can't afford um avoid it because yeah you're disturbing the roots no matter what you do so i just try to tickle as much as i can off of the roots and yeah i don't really bother like to be anal about it because we're gonna flush it out later when we go to the sink with water so that's the first thing that i do this guy over here i don't think i have shown this to you guys before this is hoya teardrop I believe this is one of Susan of Coco Ranch um, hybrids. So yeah, I feel like I did overpay for this one. But as you can see, it has abs and the leaves are just pretty. So at the end, I think it's all worth it. So same idea. We're just going to remove as much soil as we can. And this one is Hoya CV Surisa from Min Nguyen. So as you, as you see here, this one has a different sub substrate. I hate this actually this is the like the roots really get stuck on those barks those orchid barks so yeah this one is Hoya Kentiana Varigada which I got from Verdant Vivarum Verdant Vivarum is actually a local nursery here in Orange County like they specialize on terrarium plants and they have awesome Hoyas as well the great thing is she's nearby uh, my place so i can just drive and not worry about plants getting delay with this polar vortex and everything or just usps doing what they do i don't know what they do what do they do guys what do you think usps is doing oh well moving on so yeah remove as much dirt as you can and now on the last plant on this repotting is the hoya scortuccini pink very long tendril i'm so excited for this one to grow I think pond will really help because I have read a lot of good reviews about them and most of my Hoya friends that are into passive hydro has good reviews on it. Okay, now we go to the sink. Here on the sink, I just make sure that the water is somewhat warm kind of look warm not too cold because we're already shocking the roots by uprooting it and basically doing a lot of stuff on it just like this guy especially with this um, orchid barks or coconut stuff coco choir i guess that's what you call it but like the chunky ones 
you basically just kind of some of the roots get stuck so i rely on the power of the hose as i flush it and also at the same time i'm gonna use an old toothbrush here i brush as much as i can especially for these little ones like i think if this is the coco qua or a peat moss that it has been planted in so i try to remove as much as i can just like as if i am preparing the plant to be transplanted in leka if you haven't seen that video yet i'm gonna link it up here and again if you haven't subscribed yet please click that subscribe button and also like and comment by the way i highly recommend um having a strainer on your sink just to avoid clogging your plumbing as i know your significant other or the owner of your renting will not appreciate that but yeah saves you some trouble and also makes it easier to clean so here's our salad bowl of hoyas ready to be potted up in pond so now we are ready to wash our pond some people don't wash their pond but for me i think you should wash it because as you can see here the water turns murky because one of the ingredients of pond is pumice and as pumice rub against each other or any other particles just like here it has zeolite and the lava rocks it does get crushed and like these little particles are left behind and i do put this paper towel like we do use a sturdy one so you can also use mesh cloth or those cheese cloth or an old shirt to catch those residue because that will clog your plumbing too and it cause you some issues so i just seen it, rinse it until when i run out the water over the pond with the mesh um, strainer it gets clear but there, there will still be some just like this so it's clearer and as you can see it doesn't have any more residue now we're ready to pot up so this little pot here just like what i mentioned earlier this is a gift from rainier i'm gonna link his etsy store yes he finally decided to sell something on etsy because which he should so let's support small business yay and the trellis that he made for me olaf i'm gonna call it olaf we're gonna use it at some point here so yeah um so what i have here are my containers the hoyas and the washed um pond So what I usually do, I fill up the first third of the container, may it be like a, in this case, pond. So it has a gap between the lowest point of the part that might be touching the water in the water reservoir and the plant itself. And it also allows the roots to grow into something. And then I try my best to make it in the center of the pot and I just fill it up to the point that the first part of the petiole or pair of leaves is exposed and yeah that's how i just put it like like this cute pachyclita so for this one of course you all know that i do love these glass bowls from dollar tree so i got this net pot from amazon and i just altered it with some glue gun just to make the rim a little bigger so it doesn't slip through the lips of my glass bowl so i'm still utilizing a wick to help with the passive hydro effect of soilless um, planting so same idea same concept fill up the first third put the plant and fill it up up to the brim and this time because as you can see here this corticini has a tendril i'm gonna use one of rainier's trellises here to support the tendril and hopefully the plant will grow around it you can also use some clips to guide it I hope you guys learned something and i think if you have any ideas on how to make this stuff better or like you have a way that's better that you think would help me or like better than what i did actually please comment down below i would like to learn from you guys as well and as you guys saw i'm actually just utilizing the same system that i did use with leka i just basically substitute it with pawn because at the moment i think i like that I, I like that I can see how much water there is left in the reservoir instead of but some people actually look at the pond itself if it looks dry then they water them and then some just stick on a schedule but yeah again we're learning 
So, yeah, follow us on Instagram at Julian's underscore plot and there's our corner. If you haven't been following us there, comment, like, and subscribe, okay? And share this to your friends. Kita-kita tayo next time and may you always be blessed.